couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Refers. Welcome to the very first finger style challenge of the week lesson. In this video, we're gonna kickstart things with none other than the master, Chad Atkins. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this one because we're gonna learn the main riff to Windy and Warm, one of Chad's more famous uh, compositions. The main riff goes like this. <laughs> And I'm gonna teach you three additional endings so you can variate while you practice this. Let's look at the riff itself. Let's learn the melody first. It's all inside the A minor chord. So you just put A minor on and it's all in the chord. Now the, the riff, before we apply Travis picking, the riff starts like this. Okay, it's a hammer on, on the third string, from zero to two using your third finger. And then using your pinky uh, on the second string, you play one, three, one. Okay? And then you put your pinky on the third fret again and you bend it. Okay? And then you play the note unbent. So it's. And then you take it off and you play strings two and three. Okay, so that's the first melody line. Okay, now let's finish the melody first and then apply the Travis picking. And then you play this again, exactly the same first half of the lick, and then a different ending. You use your pinky again to slide from the third fret to the fifth on the second string, and then one on uh, your one, three on the first string with your first finger. That's why I said one. I was thinking first finger. Okay, so it's slide to five, three on the first string. Then you slide back from five to three, and then you can either pick one on the second string or pull off to it. Okay, or both of them are fine. Both of them sound almost the same. It's just a matter of taste. Or, and then it's two, zero, two on the third string. But the zero, two is the beginning of the first lick again, so you hammer it on. So it's basically, okay, that's the lick, and then this starts the first lick again. So you can look at it either way. So um, then you play the first lick whole. And then the very last uh, melody lick um, is this. Another hammer on on the third string. Same thing we played uh, four times before. And then the second string on one. And then you put on E minor and you play the open second string pull off with your pinky from two to zero on the third string, and then A minor again, and you end with two on the third string. Okay, so you have this. Now I suggest that when you practice this, even when you practice the melody by itself, put the A minor chord on so you're used to using the right fingers. This isn't a Travis Picking lesson. If you're not well versed in Travis Picking, there's a lesson on this channel, 20 beginner Travis Picking exercises. You're more than welcome to go check it out and get warmed up into Travis Picking. Um, and then come back. Or if you're already versed in it, just apply the Travis Picking. The Travis Picking starts along with the hammer on, okay? You hammer on the two and along with two, you play the first bass note. So it's, okay, it's not, it's this. 
Okay, it's and one. Okay, it's one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so you hammer on and play the bass note together. Okay, and then almost all of the notes you play uh, play together with the bass note. So the hammer on bass note combination is the challenge here. Okay, to play it exactly at the same time. That's the challenge and keeping the rhythm along with the melody. So listen to it. You see, almost everything uh, is aligned together with the bass notes. So playing it along with Travis Picking isn't a big challenge, uh, but who said it has to be a big challenge? I said fingerstyle challenge of the week, not insanely difficult challenge of the week. It's just another exercise for you to get better on. So... Okay, now when you slide, uh, that line only has one bass note. It's a break. And then you go back. Okay? And when you play the E minor, of course, the bass notes change to the E bass notes. So, to E and B. Okay? Or to E and E. Okay, the sixth and fourth strings, uh, depending on your Travis Picking style. Some people prefer strings six and five as their bass notes, some people prefer six and four. Uh, now, on E minor, the E minor lick, there's another challenge. It's the same challenge because uh, you have to play the second bass note along with the pull off. So you have to play this. Okay? It's. along with the pull-off, so... and then... then the final uh, lick. Now for the endings. Uh, the first ending is F and E. Okay? Um, and this replaces this. Now, it's just F, you put on the F barred chord on the first fret, E-shaped, and you play the bass, then the chord three times. And then E, you play it twice, and then open E string, pull off from three to one on the second string, and then you start again. So, um, let's play the ending. you continue. Now the second ending is a blues turnaround. This is my favorite ending of the composition. It's this. Right? Um, because it's a counterpoint. You play two different turnarounds. You play a bass turnaround and you play a blues turnaround. Okay? You play them together. That's why I like it so much. So you start with um, f just the first, second, and sixth strings open, and then you bar three and three on the first and second strings. You play four on the bass E string with it. Uh, by itself, doesn't sound that good, but you heard how it sounds in context. So this. Then you play the open A string with two and two on strings one and two. And then you play the open first and second strings with one and two on the A string. Okay, now if you want to be even more sophisticated, um, play e, um, an E7 shape when you play two on the A string. And then you um, you actually finish on E itself. Just add one on the third string and then it sounds like this. Can you hear it? It's a very small difference but this G sharp note, the major note for the E chord, makes a very large difference if you compare the two. This is pretty thin 
because it's still a transition, but this, this ends on a chord. Okay, so again, it's up to your taste, whatever sounds better to you. You can play the third string on one, you can just leave it out of it and make it a thin transition all the way, and then zero to four on the E bass string, and then you start again. Okay, so it's ending uh, is the ending for the windy and warm composition that Chad Atkins plays uh, on the American Country Music Awards from which I took all of these um, endings um, and it's this okay. pretty short pretty sweet uh, but that's Chad Atkins style. Uh, it's never too complicated, but it's perfect. So it's F again, bass, and then the chord three times. And then uh, E sharp nine, which is one on the third string and three on the first string. And you play the bass and the chord three times. Okay, same thing. Bass, three times the chord. Okay, the sharp nine it's kind of a bluesy funky addition to the chord okay it's uh, the secret to it is that you add the minor third uh, note to a major chord okay this is E major this is E minor so you're playing E major with the minor third note so um, that's um, that's the secret to what creates the the contradiction in the ear that you hear. Um, that's what makes the chord tip. So um, E sharp nine and then five on the E string, eight on the B string, and then double pull off eight, pull off the seven, pull off the five on the third string and then seven, five, seven on the fourth string, any way you want, pick it, pull it off, hammer it on, pull it off and hammer it on, and then five, five and five on strings one, two and three with the A bass string, this is A minor because this, this is A minor and we're playing the top notes and we have an open a string to use so why not just use it and um, you can also do this this just uh, came out to me you can do this instead of just another option uh, to give you um, you can add a hammer on from seven to eight at the beginning of the G string lick so it's seven eight seven five instead of eight seven five instead of just another option um, and by the way, you can play this A minor, but Chad Atkins plays this. Very short, very sweet, just like the whole riff. Before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons here and download the tab. Go to the website, the link is in the description. The tabs are for free. Of course, everything on Lake and Riff is for free. Always remain free uh, because uh, you're helping it out. And there's a blue donation button right above the tabs. And if you want to help out, you can click it and donate whatever you want. I'd be more than grateful for any donation. It always goes right back into Lake and Riff into making these lessons. Um, so you go have fun with this, practice this, and have fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.